okay now this is weird like <laughs> oh my god this is so weird so i thought i was going to do this instagram live like this is 10 p.m and this is super weird but i'm going to do this anyway so hi i'm actually hoping that no one watch <laughs> oh my god you're actually watching my instagram live this is very awkward <laughs> hi hi can you hear me hi mary hi hi how are you let me wait to you oh my god people are actually joining to watch that's interesting okay this was actually supposed to be like really random so i'm going to apply um a filter okay filter i just got okay i like this filter so i'm going to use it um so i just wanted to talk quickly about i'm doing fine no oh, even though yeah barakat i'm doing fine even the, the oh my god i <laughs> All right, so I wanted to do like history lesson, right? So I'm like this history, like underneath everything, I'm an history freak. Like so I could like go down this rabbit hole of like reading history for hours. So I posted earlier like on my stories about how happy I was that a couple of statues were like coming down and all. So I'm just going to share a picture. Do now I've actually forgotten how to share a picture. Okay, I just figured it out. So I'm going to be sharing a couple of pictures. Then I still give like. An historical background okay so earlier today bbc shared this um this i don't know if you can see it so bbc shared this photo of this statue of edward colton like you know like like basically protesters sank it in a river and it was i was excited like i'd watched the video earlier on twitter i remember going on cnn and bbc to watch the video and i was like really excited now well, i don't know why did it excite me so much I was super excited about it because I feel like if you continue to put up like statues of people that enslaved back black people, you are basically saying that racism, oppression, colonization, slavery, you are saying that all of that is okay. So this is like for people that did not know what Edward Coaston did. So the guy was like this slave trade master. So he was responsible for transporting over 200,000 like Afri Africans like from West Africa like for forced labor in the Caribbean. And for like many years, like we're talking about hundreds of years, like this guy <laughs> continued to have his statue. People were celebrating. I'm like, as long as you keep up statues like this, so you're telling people that, you know, we are celebrating um, people that did really bad stuff. And the guy was also responsible for like the deaths of like over 2,000 um, slaves because of like disease, poor treatment and all of that. So I was really happy to see the, um, to see the statue come down. I, I think the other interesting thing was that, I mean like the city celebrates him but he was such a bad person. And when I think about it, but there was another side to him. They were like, oh, he donated a lot to charities, blah, blah, blah. But I'm actually also, I'm, I'm excited that the statue has come down. So I'm going to be sharing like a different photo. Um, I hope Instagram allows me to do that. So I'm going to share a different photo and I'll just give you a like sort of like an historical on the guy too. So this guy is like my least favorite person like in the entire world, King Leopold of Belgium. Now um I don't know if you've heard of him. You can let me know in the comments if you've heard about King Leopold of Belgium. Like this guy should be ranking like he ranks like in the same ranks as people like Adolf Hitler. But it's just weird that somehow history found a, a way to like obscure his name. Like this guy is Adolf Hitler and worse. Like he was responsible for the death of 2 to 15 million people like in Congo. Like that is how bad it was. I mean Adolf Hitler didn't even kill that number of Jews. So it was, it's really awkward. Like so it's really bad to see a statue of someone that was responsible to the death of 2 to 15 million people in the Congo. Like why should the guy actually be celebrated? So now if you don't know King Leopold of Belgium, he ruled um, Congo. Like so when the did this whole like sharing of like the african cake and then they like sort of like you know each country you know placed a bead blah 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 got a particular territory king leopold got congo and what you know about congo is that till today the congo region is still not very stable and it's still one of the worst to say that even many years after colonialism like the region has still not um what's the word i still not recovered from its very terrible rule how can you be responsible for death of 2 to 15 million people but what they don't want that's some of the things that they don't want you to know about him because so so they try to like obscure it as much as possible in history so well why was the guy such a bad guy i could have liked to share images of like bad stuff he did but i feel like it'd be too graphic so i'm not going to be sharing images so some of the stuff he did was he converted the country like most of the people had to farm so they had plantations rubber plantations so if your farm does not yield enough he's going to amputate your hand 
it's going to amputate the hands of your wife it's going to amputate the hand of your wife and your children i'm like that is absolutely so crude like this guy amputated almost half like an entire country like how wicked can you be i know i'm laughing about it but i remember when i saw the pictures like you can actually google the pictures just google king leopold the second of belgium and you will see wonders right like how can you do that like so like so if your farm doesn't yield enough you are going to cut off their hands like that is really bad yes i'm actually a little i'm actually serious just google it, google it right now you can even go off the life and go and google it like and you cut off the like I feel like that's the height of wickedness. Like, you leave a country half full of amputees. So, at the end of this rule, about 15 million people have died. Like, that is, like, absolutely, like, a really terrible thing. But guess what? All over Belgium, they are, like, statues of this guy. Like, this guy is a really celebrated hero. How can he be a celebrated hero? Like, how? There's even a statue, um, allegedly a statue of, you know, people of Congo, like, just appreciating him for... Yeah, it guy is worse than Hitler. Like, that's... I was reading a couple of articles in it, and, like, this guy, like, did way worse than anything you could actually ever accuse out of Hitler of. Like, this guy was worse. He killed more people. But somehow, somehow, they tried to obscure it, and he was actually able to build the wealth of Belgium, because before that time, Belgium was a country that was not reckoned with in Europe and people thought he wasn't going to survive like it was the cousin of King Queen Victoria the first or so so it was a cousin and she even said that the guy was going to amount to nothing so in a bid to prove himself like he did that and Belgium became like really rich although he did it primarily to enrich himself so now this guy has lots of statues so I was really happy this week that some of his statues like people defaced it and they yeah so they had to like bring down the statues so that's actually like something i was actually happy about that and there's even a book that was really re that was written about it recently i think the ghost of leopold or something like that just basically talking about a lot of bad things that he did so i totally recommend that you go online and you google king leopold two of um, belgium and his murderous acts in the congo and let me see actually wrote notes ah let me see what else i wrote in my notes yes so there's even i was reading one article and they tagged it the Eden Holocaust because I feel like it's something like that or even worse and the truth is that now this was one line that I read in the guard in the Guardian and it actually really shook me and they said neither the Belgian neither the Belgian monarchy nor the Belgian states has ever apologized for the atrocities that it committed in Congo like they have never apologized for it and I think that that's such a bad thing because now in Congo you don't have one Congo you don't have Congo as one country you have DRL Congo and then you have Congo separately and I think that it's one of because I feel like a country cannot go through such a rule and just suddenly bounce back and then you'll be fine um I remember watching a TED talk a couple of years ago and I was like, trying to like analyze like the problem of Africa like oh so what exactly is wrong with Africa and one of the things that um speaker spoke about was fact that like if a thief came to my house tonight and robbed me and I was robbed tomorrow I don't wake up as the exact same person so let's say my laptop was stolen actually my laptop was stolen in December the next morning my laptop was stolen and i next morning when i woke up i woke up as a person without a laptop that means that everything i could have possibly done with my laptop i couldn't do and i was actually devastated because i had like really important stuff on the laptop now imagine a continent that has gone through like centuries like should i say centuries yeah thousands of years like okay it was about 400 years okay let's say decades <laughs> decades of exploration and um you don't just come out of it like the same way and sometimes i feel like that's part why like things a little bit on the bad side although of course we can't blame that because now there's no point blaming colonial masters the next thing is what can we do <laughs> um i don't know my theory about nigeria is that <laughs> nigeria is yeah um you need said nigeria has a history that we swept under the rug why don't you talk about yeah i think that history is not um taught enough in nigeria i remember this week i was like you know what i don't know anything yeah yes yes alilu like he was the founder and sole owner of the congo free state and he said that he actually spent most of the money on his mistress a 16 year old french prostitute like can you imagine like that is absolutely ridiculous for me that's the height of wickedness like how do you i think it was the amputation those are the things that really got to me so Eunice was saying something about how in nigeria we don't talk so much about history so yes like this week i actually went and i bought this there was a country because i felt like I, I barely know anything about the civil war and it seems to be such an important part of nigerian history that nobody really talks about so i'm like you know what i just want to start reading about it and sort of researching about it yeah 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 yes yeah, so said nigeria yes i feel like yeah we don't really explore our history that much like in nigeria and nigeria has interesting history 
let me see what else i wrote down so i'm going to show you this guy all right so this is like the next contender yeah the next contender on the list um so robert e lee so it was this was a statue that was removed this week in the u.s after like many years of debate i'm talking about over 20 years of debate about whether or not to remove this so if you know um at the american civil war you know it was built it was primarily about slavery like people in the south were like you know what we have a right to own our slaves and people in the um northern part of the country the member of Lincoln guys were like oh no 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 we don't want slavery again and so this statue has really been such controversy because when you read this man's story like this man was really really cruel to his slaves and so the question was why should he be celebrated because as long as you keep up that statue you're kind of like saying that what this guy did was right right you're saying that it was right you're celebrating it you're saying that we tolerate racism we tolerate slavery we tolerate colonialism so and cause there were things that I even wrote in his memoir about how black people like out i'm like i mean like if you wrote all these things i think i made a couple of screenshots but it'd be troublesome if i try to share them the text will probably not come out right um so let me see so this is what um this is what he said about african americans was i think there was a i can't even read it don't worry i'll just probably recommend that you read the articles so the summary is that the statue was removed and it's a great thing like it's great news right that was removed um so the last one is this guy um for some reason i can't get the picture um to show the right way um so his own story is like pretty simple so what happened then it's so simple about being a wicked guy um so um what he was like a slave owner so he had he owned slaves he forced the slave he forced people to work in um this guy is robert miller yeah he forced people to work on his plantations in jamaica and the point is that people just felt in the end like if you were a symbol of slave trade you profited a lot from it um okay let me post and read the comment uh, said Leopold's administration of the Congo was characterized by murder, yes, torture and atrocity resulting from notorious systemic brutality. Yes, ex as in, I don't want to look at the pictures, like, I'm not even going to check the pictures again this night because I want to sleep well. And CJ said that makes sense though, they had to make black people less than human to justify their treatment, yes. And so, I was having an argument like in a WhatsApp group today, and the argument was that someone was saying that inequality is a part of society and inequality should be accepted and my argument was that you cannot if you cannot if you accept an inequality in a particular sense you cannot not accept it like so if you say oh okay so there's slavery there's colonialism and then all of that you say okay inequality is a part of life let's just accept it no you cannot accept it you cannot tolerate it because and we were like you know what inequality after after some time the stuff will just go away inequality does not budge like on its own like the stuff doesn't like it doesn't just move like who just don't like the oppressor doesn't just decide to stop oppressing like societal change does not come by i don't know i'm trying to find the word societal change does not come by like it's just automatic or it just happens by mistake like oh like i want to use your power like oh gosh, like it doesn't happen like that when you want something to change you press for it to change so basically like that is um yeah that's for me so this is where i go back and i stop yeah okay um now i'm trying to figure out a way to stop sharing the picture this is where i can't find a way to stop sharing the picture oh my god i'm such an instagram does yes 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 you have to make them uncomfortable yeah like what's happening in the united states like so inequality will not just budge on its own like these things just don't change these things just don't go away and so saying that like sometimes when you think about you be like oh I, like i mentioned it on my whatsapp saying that when you talk about how um everything that's happening in the u.s sometimes feels like oh you have no right to talk about these things after all do you live in the u.s so is it your problem <laughs> so why should you be talking about these things but for me i'm like the experience of being a black person yeah a black person like a black person is a black person it doesn't matter the country you're from like once you leave this context in nigeria you're just a human being but once you're not in nigeria you're not a human being again you're a black person and any experience of a person of color is going to be your own experience too so if there's a conversation you have to lend your lend your voice the other thing that was really interesting i wrote an article about it this afternoon though i've not published yet was about how when um the old like when george floyd was murdered and then his tape came out and all of that the african union was really quick to respond and then a lot of people on twitter criticized the african union like what's wrong with you guys like africa is the continent that has the most 
armed conflicts going on like there are so many situations of armed conflicts still ongoing in africa and it's a total shame many of them we don't even know about them like i remember reading about central african republic and central african republic like some parts of the country are literally controlled by rebels like rebels control the schools they employ the teachers they pay the teachers like so like a very divisive country so africa has so much armed conflict going on. so like please africa you know you people have not finished minding your business or even making comments about conflicts that are going on within your own continent and then the first conversation you want to weigh into is one that's happening outside the continent now i think that that's valid and that's also invalid like i'm like I, i'll make an argument for the african union and then i'll make an argument against them the argument is that yes you need to talk more about what's going on on the continent respond with the same kind of speed that you respond with when something happens outside the continent but i think on the other hand too there's this there's the fact that, I mean, whatever is happening to a black person is happening to a black person everywhere. And we know that black people are primarily in Africa. And now, the second argument that I saw on Twitter was um, David, on, I can't pronounce his name. Okay. David, one controversial guy that likes posting controversial things, which are often true, was talking about the fact that perhaps the reason why um, African Americans or Africans generally are people of color, black people continue to be treated the way they are. Um, in other countries is because africa is nothing to be proud of so this afternoon i was joking with my stamp like if i'm an african-american but i can't even vex and say i don't like what they are treating me in america i can't vex and just say i'm coming to nigeria like you can't like you can't you can't vex and come because there's nothing to come back to africa for so like maybe perhaps they'll always continue not to respect black people unless african countries unless africa becomes something to be proud of like you will never have that skin color would never have respect unless yeah unless the continent is something to be proud of so it's also important so when we talk about all these conversations it's very important to talk about how we can actually grow our continent to like make it something that makes sense and when i think about it like i'm an enthusiast like i'm only saying oh i'm going to nigeria is going to work on that's only saying if i come to canada come to canada <laughs> even like they won't be like you in canada but the thing is i have so much hope in nigeria but today is one of those days when i lose a lot of hope when I see someone that's been accused of corruption and uh, and is welcome back like a celebrity into the parliament, I lose hope and I'm like, what kind of system am I believing in? <laughs> you know when you're like, okay, what am I believing in? If you do all these bad things, you go to prison, nothing comes out of the case, you spend like five months and the next thing you get a rousing applause and you're welcome. I'm trying not to mention names. I die. I'm... I follow her and I'm, like I'm trying not to mention I'm like oh my god my hope in Nigeria is dying so now all I have is prayer I'm just like god please pray for this it's really not inshallah vibes god save us save us save us in Nigeria so let me try to read like some of the comments and I would respond yeah Barakat said it's a false binary yeah it's not black and white like I can't say that they are totally bad I can't say they're totally good then Ali was saying I understand that we all have our difference but what I learned about our history about why people coming together jews coming together spanish coming together yeah different yes i think that we all have to learn about our differences and you need said exactly okay Sid just said there's um sorry Sid papi uh, i don't know why exactly we are so there's another argument if we don't speak up for them they can't expect them yeah we can't expect them to speak up for us when needed yes although i had another thought this afternoon like when i was thinking about it, i was like so while we're we talking about the rights of african americans i'm like when something bad is going on on the african continent i hope they are, they are going to want to weigh in and also lend their voice because when i think about the concept of being african american what is of pride in being african american is not being african but the american identity that is attached to that name like people are not fighting for <laughs> people are not fighting for the african in the african american but more of the american in the african american really so but i mean that's just one of the part of beings that we are in inside this life uh, yeah so yeah Baraka said yes until lion writes his own till the story forever glorify the hunter yes I think it's also important that we write our own history and i feel like ev what every single person is doing is really writing african history oh my god what did he say <laughs> oh was it <laughs> okay it's a big shape i die <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry uh, god 
Yeah, me being black. Okay, so I'm, re I'm reading Alilu's comments. Said me being black, it doesn't mean I only qualify to be shot and arrested or to be killed. There are more certificates I deserve rather than a death certificate. Yes, why is it a crime to live? Why is it a crime to be a black person? Like, I feel like that's something I never understand. One of these days, I found a journal I was writing in when I was 15. And my question at 15 was like, what is wrong with being a black person? I don't, I didn't get it then. And even till now, like, I still don't get it. Like, I still, still don't get it. Like, I don't get it. Like, uh, I cannot explain it. <laughs> I really can't explain it. Yeah, uh, yeah, you need said they are so we are so numb to the killings in Nigeria and it's so sad. I read an article of killings in Bornu today and nobody said nothing. Yes, I think that's something that Elnathan talks about all the time. It's always like Nigerians were desensitized to violence. Like I read the article too and I just moved on. And because uh, Nigeria almost sometimes feels like an hopeless place. Like how do I put it? Like so now I feel really bad about the killings going on in Bornu, but what am I going to do? Like, I feel like in a place like the U.S., protests work. But so if I come now in Ife and I carry protests and I'm doing a placard around, does this thing really work? Would the government really listen to me? Would they hear my voice? Because Nigeria always feels like such a situation. So I feel like most Nigerians have chosen a coping mechanism of when these things happen, people just look away and say, you know what, we need to fight another day. But I'm really hopeful that these things will change. But all these things go back to one thing, governance. Like, if you have good governance, like, yeah, these things. Um, I think no said well in an in house issue doesn't mean outsiders shouldn't yes, 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 it doesn't. Let me read. Yeah, Lily said the strange often uncalled for collective artificial fear European Americans have of African American is genuine fear African Americans should at all times abort it's uh king I've not fully I I really don't fully understand the comments. Like if you can sort of like explain to me the African, I, yes, it's only claim when it's time for Afro nation. That's all the times that we <laughs> we identify with being African, right? I remember I was watching this video on YouTube and person was saying, in terms of African culture, we talk more about African. So now I'm wearing this Ankara something on my head. Actually, it's because my hair looks really bad. You don't want to see it. And when people say, oh, that's so African. Like African, Ankara is not even African. Like. Ankara is was invented sort of by a Swedish company. Like, did you know that about Ankara? Like, Ankara is not traditional to Africa, like in any way. Like, Ankara is not traditional to Africa. So what happened was they created this product for women in Asia, particularly in the Indonesian markets and countries around there. But the stuff was not really well accepted. Like the product was not the fabric product was not really well accepted. So in the end, they brought it to Africa, and I mean like Africans embraced it, and it sort of became like a symbol of African identity. Even though it's not really African, you can just read about it, the origin of Ankara. But when we talk about Africa, yeah, we only embrace it when it comes to stuff like Afro nation and stuff. To say that we, we Africa, we see more in terms of cultural expression, but I think owning the identity really goes beyond how you express culture or you're wearing Ankara. I mean, did you guys see what um, um, Nancy Pelosi did? That she wore this. Um, so, Nancy Pelosi is the speaker of um, um, the White House, whatever. Oh my god, the word has left my head. And she's one of Trump's nemesis. So she put this old kente thing around her neck. Just to say, um, you know, everything is for political points. But that's not the point. I'm talking really fast. Um, so CJ was like, yes, another takeaway. We see black Americans fight and fight for what they want. And so far, they appear to always win. We need to learn from that. Yes, we also need to we need to learn from that. Um, let me see. The people have not waved to. Yeah, the constant killing not is this time. Like, this stuff is time. I mean, like... Sometimes when I see the pictures on Twitter, I just look away and I, I just pray because I'm like, God, it seems like you're the only one that can help us because these people have leaders. Like, there's a budget for these things. Like, I, like, I don't know how it works. I'm like, if we don't know how to do it, maybe we should beg from, uh, from other countries to train security. I don't understand. Nigeria is another complicated thing. Yeah. Yeah, um, Noel said, uh, Marcus Gavi spoke about repatriation to Africa, but to the black continent and black people everywhere bound together, things will continue to be the way they are. Yes, I think it's important. I, and I think one of the hallmarks of this Black Lives Matter thing is that it has been a time for us as Africans, like, or people of color generally, to bond together and sort of identify and say we are, like, in a common struggle. And I believe that so far, progress is being made. Um, yeah, I, yes, Baraka, totally, like, I actually wish, oh my god, I hope my phone almost fell. <laughs> I literally wish that we could change it. I really wish we could change it. Because, you know all these times in Nigeria, when they tell us to sign petitions, so you see one online petition, someone will send it to your WhatsApp. Somewhere at the back of my mind, to be honest, I'm sending the petition, but I'm like, does this thing really work? Like, I'm in Nigeria, like, are these people going to listen to me? 
like I've seen one scandalous thingy where like a member of the House of Assembly in Lagos or something, maybe the speaker or something, like this guy was spending money anyhow, like collecting money to go to conferences in Australia that didn't even exist. And the truth is that nothing came out of it. So is it those people that I'm signing petitions to go and give to them? <laughs> like people that don't even care, like they could really absolutely care less. Like I don't so sometimes I'm like so I just Whenever I get to this crossroads, I just use Elnathan's words. You know what Elnathan said? Elnathan said we are in an abusive relationship with Nigeria. So I'm like, <laughs> Nigeria is abusing me and Nigeria is abusing us all. Because it seems like this is a lose-lose situation. Like the people lose and I don't know, evil tribes. Yeah, it says that, oh, yeah, we can, yeah. Daya, Daya said that we can only fix it when we are united. Yeah. Um, Yunis said the death of OP man is the death of man. Then Chikufunaya said, um, yeah, the Democrats are using, yeah, of course, they are using it as a, everything in the U.S. is politics. Yeah, and then, yeah, Daniel said, we as Africans hate ourselves. The African-Americans look down on pure, uh, pure Africans um, with the mindset that we are chilling while we're taking our slaves. Yes, it's actually true. Like, even among Africans, there's racism. Like, even in Africa, like, racism is a, even being black in Africa is a problem. So I remember reading this, um, watching this video in Al Jazeera, how in uh was it tunisia libya yeah in libya black people were being killed in libya i'm not even talking about nigerians that had to go to europe by all means that was a different story about the nigerian dream but the fact that there was a segregation between african people in libya that were dark skinned like normal black looking people and then the more arabian looking people and so for even being an african like a fellow african like there's a sort of discrimination so sometimes even within ourselves we sort of hate ourselves like and it's complicated now while i say that i remember i was watching another video it was an instagram live and they were um people in north africa and they were also complaining that when they say the africans people treat them like they're outsiders and <laughs> see the matter is i feel like africa is such a complicated continent but we're also a very blessed continent. I think there's so much diversity, and our problems revolve around leadership. If we had good, if we had good leadership to steer us like in a positive direction, I think that would, um, I don't know, <laughs> we'll be able to achieve a lot more. Really, let me see. Yeah, only politicians are winning. You know? see, like in my house, every money, dream money, but I say add it to the prayer. Even will no longer prosper in Nigeria because I'm really at that point of prayer points. Because you see someone do something so evil. So I remember, um, you know, someone being a past governor of Oshun State, and in those years, did not really have so much to show for it. And then this person goes on to get a ministerial position. I'm like, what kind of works of wickedness is this? How can you lead a state for eight years, not be able to prove any track record of great success? And then you go on like to get a leadership position. Like, do we reward? Like, how do how do you reward? Honestly, my chest is paining me. <laughs> my chest is paining. And at this point, I just remember my answers was that if I come to Canada, we need people like you in Canada. Oh my god. Yeah. I told me, let me see. Um, what did Dio say? Yeah. Oh, Dio said he's coming back to lead us for a well. Come and join our abusive relationship with Nigeria. Uh, yeah, um, Noah said, um, finally, at the core, many Africans today, Pan-Africanism is still missing, and um, they are expecting you die. Okay, yeah, so my last, I, I think, I wouldn't say my last ones, but no, these are not my last ones, because I still talk about this again. I, I think that, um, conclusively, like, just a thought of Pan-Africanism. <laughs> oh, Daya said, come to Canada, I'm waiting for you. I, I think so, but maybe maybe that's the case. I'll be, I'll, man said I should come to Canada. From there, I'll be up in Nigeria. That, you know, I'll just set up an NGO. I'll be sending money to, <laughs> to help Nigeria. So I, I think, I don't know. I think I'm pronouncing it right. So I think as a final thought, talking about Pan-Africanism. Pan-Africanism um, sounds like uh, an academic concept and does not help anybody on the surface of the books. I think what really helps us, and what, when I remember during the series, one of the speakers I spoke talked about a social model of Pan-Africanism, which is really you connecting with other Africans. Like, that's just simply what it is. Like, do what you can connect, like, do what you can to connect, build relationships, build, be, and on your own, just do something good for the continent, and try to get as many people as possible, like, in your community to be interested. When I say community, it can be your online community, your WhatsApp community or something. To be interested in what you're trying to do um so that's summary is there anyone that, that has anything that you'd like to add to this maybe go and sleep i mean i wonder what i'm doing this live at 10 something 
Does anyone that has anything to add? So before we say good night, good night. If you'd like to join the video and say anything, like before we all go to bed, except for like Daya, <laughs> nah, uh, somewhere else. So let me know. Let me check the time. Like I wait for like thirty seconds. Ah, Daya, thank you, thank you. I yes, and sometimes we see all your fine pictures. <laughs> it sounds so professional. <laughs> That's what you have to say. Ah, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Why are you doing red face, please? <laughs> okay, so good night, everybody. I hope you enjoyed my small history class, even though it wasn't comprehensive. Maybe from time to time, I will have all these late night classes, and we we'll learn something. So. Good night, everybody. Have a very wonderful night. So, bye. Oh, thank you. Thank you. How do I pronounce CJJ Papi? Okay, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yes, Africa is not for everyone. Africa belongs to Africans. Yes, definitely. It belongs to Africans. I said, no, that's not a, that co that's another conversation. So, good night, everybody. The video will be on IGT if you want to watch it later. And if you enjoyed it, you can recommend it to your friends. Bye.